it going, everybody? I'm Justin Scott with BruceLineEducation.com and uh, some quick tips on uh, skin fade for my 1A here, down to about a 5-0, and then clean it up with a straight blade. I'm just going through right now and taking out all the bulk with the longest guard I'm going to use, being very careful not to get rid of any of his uh, beautiful blonde locks up top, cutting every direction just to make sure you get rid of all those hairs. And again, I'm only focusing on the top part. I'm not going to sit there and go over all of his head because I'll get to it eventually. I'm going to keep the hair. Now, there's a reason I kept it unclipped so that way I could control it as I was going through the top part. So now I'm just going to clip that out of the way. Now the way I'm going to be fading this haircut is I'm going to fade down. So I started with my longest guard and I'm going to work down towards my shortest guard. Again I'm working with the Oster guards at this time. Uh, they're detachable heads so that way I went from my 1A now I'm working down to my 1. I'm just going to bring this right up close to where that 1A was but not exactly to it. I'm uh, using just your basic parietal ridge as my line for where I'm going to cut. I'm just taking his a little higher. I'm going to go up my 0A. And again, blend that into the last guard that I used. I'm stretching the skin too just to keep control so you get just a little bit of a tighter cut. I'm very delicate when I use these guards for the fact that they are metal. Some people go in a little too aggressive. You can nick the client, catch their head, and try not to do that. And right about here, right around the occipital is where you want to be most careful because it does protrude out and everybody's head's different. So you want to make sure you take into account where the occipital kind of contorts back into the nape of the neck so that way you don't jam in the base of the skull. And again, I'm not going into the hair. I'm going into the head and I'm just coming straight out. Try to keep nice, clean elevation the whole way down. This haircut's gonna be very high. Most of the fade is going to be done from about here down. It's going to be very tight with skin. And from here up is where you're going to see that weight of hair, that line that we're trying to keep there. And while you're using these tools, you want to make sure you keep them dusted off because hair does build up on them. So I like to keep just a simple nail brush on my station, not to be used on the client. I see that with a lot of people. I try to just use this on my tools, keep them dusted off. Between every guard, I try to also always spray my cool care on it. This is a great tool to have. And again, taking my 3-0 now, I'm going to continue to bring this up high on its head. And from here on out, I'm going to try to just use the guard where I want it. I don't want to drill his head over and over with these metal guards because they do tend to get warm as well. coming up for a reason that the head's round. So as I'm coming up, that head's going to arc in and as long as the blade's not following it, it's going to already kind of elevate that hair and cut it at the length you want it. One of my favorite guards, we have the 4-0. Going to get very tight. You got to be careful with this too because if you look, it's almost like a razor blade. So you have to be very careful with 
when you're going on the client's head, you don't go too rough, too aggressive with it. This is where you can really start to damage people. Again, just bringing it up close to where I left off. The reason I left the line there is so I know I use my 3-0 here. My 4-0 is only coming up a slight bit because from here down is only going to be skin. So it would be make no sense to take all that hair off. And also, when you're just starting to learn these cuts, it's nice to keep that there so that way you don't have to guess where you left off with your 3-0. Now I'm going to take the 5-0. This is going to be the lowest guard I use before I bring it to skin. Since I left all that weight there and I could keep track of where I was blending everything, it made that skin line very seamless so you don't have any weight there. Balder now. This is the Wall 4000. Uh, it's a tool I have come to love. I'm just going to go over all that skin area. I went from the two blades where I cleaned up all the weight and I'm just going to take the one blade, just kind of flick it out if I see any kind of weight line there. Uh, the one blade will get you, um, it, it doesn't take it as short as the two blade does, it kind of flicks out any line that's there. It doesn't cut as much. Now that 5-0, I love it so much because it gets so close that if you look, there's no line where the boulder met to it. At this point in the cut, I've got a lot of my foundation laid out. Now it's just the cleaning up part. Uh, different parts of his head I hit with the same blade but sometimes you have growth patterns. You have hair that's maybe a little more coarse. It might grow in this way and the other side grows in the other direction. You just want to make sure that you run through that and get any of those lines. This is that finishing techniques on a woman's haircut or a longer haircut. You would do this after you blow dry it. You would go in, you'd point cut, you would do your texturizing. This is kind of like the texturizing on this kind of haircut. Uh, this is the finishing up of it. Now I'm going to go grab for my Andy's Masters. And this is just to tighten the haircut up. With this you have a lot more control with the arm here to get high, a little closer, a little more precision with it. Um, I always like to keep these by my station. So now I'm just gonna jump in there. My one guard. Hang on, this is just to kind of get rid of this little line of demarcation I'm seeing right here that I couldn't get out with uh, metal guards. So I'm gonna start open. When the guard is open, this is pushed all the way away. That's the longer you're gonna get that guard. When it's pushed all the way down, you get that true one. So, from cutting Brian's hair and doing this haircut, I know I'm gonna, I kinda wanna start in the middle. So I'm gonna keep my thumb there. That's just make sure it doesn't move too much. I'm just gonna go in. And you'll hear little by little, little hairs cutting off. The one was just barely taking a little bit off, so I'm gonna reach for the zero. The zero. All these guards I'm using right now are just to get rid of this one line. I'm not touching this, I'm not worrying about that because that's skin. I'm just worrying about this line right here, I see. My zero open. I'm just flicking out. I'm going to close it now. So I didn't... Here, just a little bit coming off. I love the magnets on those. It makes life so much easier. And now I'm just going to go in my open guard. 
Again, this is the Andes Master Series, but it doesn't have the fade blade on it. It just has the basic cutting head to it. Um, the fade blade is just a little bit of a closer guard you get cut with. Um, this, I like working with this for just trying to blend the line out right there. And if you look at it now, we got a lot of the weight out. There's only a small amount of weight I have to get rid of right here. I'm gonna open all the way and just flick. And I hear just those few hairs getting cut. going guys just a quick recap of the haircut I went through and took a lot of the bulk out and did all the hard work with my officers here with the detachable guards then I went through the bottom and I used my wall 4000 balder and then the last thing I did just to tighten everything up I just went through with my Andy's master series and just cleaned up any line I may have seen thanks for watching guys make sure you subscribe and have a great day How's it going everybody? I'm Justin Scott with BruceLawnEducation.com and uh, some quick tips on uh, skin fade for my 1A here down to about a 5-0 and then clean it up with a straight blade. I'm just going through right now and taking out all the bulk with the longest guard I'm going to use. Being very careful not to get rid of any of his uh, beautiful blonde locks up top. Cutting every direction just to make sure you get rid of all those hairs. And again, I'm only focusing on the top part. I'm not going to sit there and go over all of his head because I'll get to it eventually. I'm going to keep the hair. Now, there's a reason I kept it unclipped so that way I could control it as I was going through the top part. So now I'm just going to clip that out of the way. Now the way I'm going to be fading this haircut is I'm going to fade down. So I started with my longest guard and I'm going to work down towards my shortest guard. Again, I'm working with the Auster guards at this time. Uh, they're detachable heads. So that way I went from my 1A. Now I'm working down to my 1. I'm just going to bring this right up. Close to where that 1A was, but not exactly to it. I'm uh, using just your basic parietal ridge as my line for where I'm going to cut. I'm just taking his a little higher. I'm going to go up my 0A. And again, blend that into the last guard that I used. I'm stretching the skin too just to keep control so you get just a little bit of a tighter cut. I'm very delicate when I use these guards for the fact that they are metal. Some people go in a little too aggressive. You can nick the client, catch their head, and try not to do that. And right about here, right around the occipital is where you want to be most careful because it does protrude out and everybody's head's different. So you want to make sure you take into account where the occipital kind of contorts back into the nape of the neck so that way you don't jam in the base of the skull. And again, I'm not going into the hair. I'm 
going into the head and I'm just coming straight out. Try to keep nice, clean elevation the whole way down. This haircut's gonna be very high. Most of the fade is gonna be done from about here down. It's gonna be very tight with skin. And from here up is where you're gonna see that weight of hair, that line that we're trying to keep there. And while you're using these tools, you wanna to make sure you keep them dusted off because hair does build up on them. So I like to keep just a simple nail brush on my station, not to be used on the client. I see that with a lot of people. I try to just use this on my tools, keep them dusted off. Between every guard, I try to also always spray my cool care on it. This is a great tool to have. And again, taking my three zero now, I'm gonna to continue to bring this up high on his head. And from here on out, I'm gonna to try to just use the guard where I want it. I don't wanna drill his head over and over with these metal guards because they do tend to get warm as well. Mm -hmm. 